As one of the last of the big, naturally aspirated supercars, the Lamborghini Aventador is a compelling and brutally fast machine. And now it's even more extreme. This is the Aventador SVJ. There is more power, 759 brake horsepower, which drives through an old-fashioned single-clutch gearbox to all four wheels. But that's where the old-fashioned nature ends. In the SVJ, the rear wheels actively steer. There is less weight through vast use of carbon fiber. There are active aerodynamics and a price in excess of £350,000. There is also the option of very, very sticky tyres used on the Nürburgring where this car now holds the production car lap record. But we've come, for reasons I'll go into, to a particularly unsticky racetrack to try the SVJ out. And so this is the Aventador SVJ on a brand new surface on Estoril racetrack, which means there's no tire degradation to speak of, the grip levels are quite low, and apparently this is giving some issues to exploiting the SVJ's full handling, but we'll see how we get on. You can feel already, you can see possibly already, what this single clutch gearbox, even though I'm in the car's fastest mode, means for the balance. So as soon as you get, you get on it, you get up it, there is that. Lamborghini owners apparently rather like it. I suspect they like the engine rather more. So it revs now to nearly 9,000, makes peak power at eight and a half, which is absurd for an engine of this size. It was, is, and apparently always will be the highlight of a Lamborghini is having this naturally aspirated V12. How they get to it, a story for another time. But I suspect hybrid assistance might keep it within the realms of acceptability from an environmental perspective. Anyway, what's it like? Really fast. I mean really fast. And that's not the most shocking thing about the Aventador, because the Aventador is always fast. You can hear the tyre squeal. That's a result of this surface. This just means there's very little mechanical grip. And yeah, it does get on. I mean, that is to 75 kilometres an hour. Whatever that is in old money, really fast. But it's what this Aventador has in corners that is so different to previous ones. Because it's got this active rear wheel steering and active aerodynamics which puts aero to the inside of the car in corners. That helps it turn really abruptly to the extent actually that you have to be quite delicate with the way you turn it. In a conventional car, especially a big sports car, you might sort of trail the brakes towards the apex and that helps guide the nose in. With the SVJ, actually it pays to get your braking done and actually then just turn and come onto almost a steady throttle and that rear steer helps guide the back of the car in and helps this car feel more agile than a large capacity V12 super sports car ought to. Now the only problem with that is you are then relying on the electronics and mechanics of a system to do things that in most other sports cars you would end up doing yourself. So it is not an entirely natural feeling system actually. And it's easy to take more of the corner as you turn and it's easier to take a bigger chunk than you think you might want. So you can end up, if you're not really in tune with it, cornering a little bit sort of 50p-ish, you know, just having various chunks at the same corner. But if you get into tune with it, lighten your grip on the steering, don't turn on the way in as much as you think, get the braking done and forgotten about, and then just guide it in. Actually, what this car can do is fairly, fairly astonishing. And also, and this is not something you necessarily associate with a Lamborghini or any car at 350,000 quid, but bear in mind this is a 770 metric horsepower car for 350,000 pounds. And it happens to have a lot of carbon fiber on it, active aero, rear steer. It's amazingly quick. I mean, it's quicker than the hybrid hypercars around the Nordschleifer. So from that point of view, you could argue that the Aventador SVJ is rather good value. So what? It's enough to give you a bit. Look, no, that's a third gear corner, 60 miles an hour, and the tyres are squealing like anything. That's how new this surface is. So the mechanical grip's really low. Tyre degradation is virtually nil. As I mentioned earlier, you can now get an SVJ on Trofeo tyres. This is still running the sort of firmer roadie compound 
horses and a set of tyres easily lasts all day because there's just no abrasion. There's very little grip generated. It'll be really interesting to see what it feels like on a circuit where there is bags of mechanical grip to go with the rest of it. It's not an easy car to get straight into sync with. A bit like Ferrari's F12 TDF was at first, the first Ferrari to sort of use active rear steer and it made for a slightly uncomfortable, awkward handling car near the limit. This feels more resolved than that, but it's still a characteristic you have to get your head around. But it is one that no doubt makes this car feel more agile, if not more natural. But it is very difficult not to love a car that has an engine like this and looks as wild as this and is actually as capable as it is when you totally get on it 